गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन प्लीज एक्सेप्ट बेस्ट विशेष फ्रॉम डॉक्टर अंकुर लाट साइंटिफिक मैनेजर हॉइबा फॉर योर फाइनेस्ट स्टेट ऑफ हेल्थ इन करेंट टाइम्स अट मोस्ट प्रायोरिटी शुड बी गिवेन टू स्टेइंग सेफ एंड आई सिंसियरली होप ऑल ऑफ यू आर फॉलोइंग प्रॉपर कोविड प्रोटोकॉल्स आई वंस अगेन वेलकम यू ऑल टू आवर फोर्थ सेशन ऑफ वेबिनार ऑन डिजिटल मोफोलॉजी सम क्वेश्चन माइट अराइज वाई वाई सीरीज ऑफ वेबिनार्स कॉज we wanted to start from very basic and we sought to impart every minute details in the same quest three engrossing sessions covering evolution technology application and utility on digital morphology have already been accomplished by elena from selavision of course which involved a lot of brainstorming in technical and methodological aspects so now moving to the next level today's session will be delight for hematologist and pathologist as it will cover striking cases on rbc and patellates today you will see how some findings are evident on digital morphology and can be missed on manual microscopy how digital morphology automatically characterizes and classifies red blood cells into morphological categories based on their size color shape inclusions and guarantees the reliability of analysis and quality of medical services how it allows the laboratory to access the ability of prospective blood film reviewer to correctly identify individual rbc population leading to better diagnosis and the other vital thing how an advanced hematology analyzer is equally important to complement digital morphology in attainment of proper diagnosis so without wasting much time let's hear it from none other than dr gautam gopal bhagwat who is an avid user of umis and hello series and selavision he will be sharing his practical experience and cases let me take the pleasure of inviting dr bhagwat to put forth this session dr gautam dr sorry dr gautam gopal bhagwat is consultant hematopathologist and is currently the section director of hematology immunohematology and flow cytometry sections at suraksha diagnostic kolkata he has received his fellowship in laboratory hematology from the prestigious tata medical center kolkata he also had one month hands on training at the university of salamanca spain where he gained experience in flow cytometric analysis of various hematological malignancy and mrd analysis in 2019 he received the berlin haven travel award at the annual conference of iss isls in vancouver canada and he has completed his mbbs and md from rd gardi medical college uzan and his area of interest are hematology hemato oncology and flow cytometry and he has specialized in mbbs and md pathology so welcome dr bhagwat over to you thank you very much dr angur for the introduction i hope i am audible good evening to all i hope everybody is staying safe following the covid protocols and we would proceed with this webinar series i have been given the responsibility to take forward with the rbc and the platelet morphology in the course of next 40 to 45 minutes i will go through uh, my experience in the past one year with the hello solution series with horiba and selavision which has been my primary platform in suraksha diagnostics um so what so usually the workflow in a laboratory would be that we receive the uh, samples nowadays we have barcoded sample so the uh, errors related to sampling have been minimized a uh, technologist looks into the uh, volume of the sample and presence of any visible clots if everything is satisfactory this goes into the uh, analyzer analyzers will give us certain values for various parameters it will give us histogram it will give us the flags as a pathologist i would review these values the flags and the histogram if everything is satisfactory i will there and there sign out the report 
one advantage that I have in my lab is with this uh, P8000 or the uh, middleware which Horiba has provided. All the instruments have their own middleware. I find this comfortable because this I can directly see onto my LIS. Uh, so I need not get up from my desk to see into the histograms. I need not have any printouts going around for all these um, flags and values and histograms. I directly see it onto my uh, computer screen. I go through the values, the flags. If required, I would ask for a slide. Now, a slide can be made on request or with this middleware, especially this P8000, we can put in some reflex criteria. I have put in according to my uh, needs in my lab. Everybody has their own choices. Uh, there are guidelines also, recommendations from ICSH, and accordingly, we can put uh, the slide reflex criteria. So the slides are automatically made on the slide maker and stainer, which would give you good quality slides coming to me. I look it into the microscope and then report out and, and whatever comment I have to put in, I give it. So this is a standard workflow, more or less the same in all the labs reporting CBCs. The slide rates depends on the nature of patient that we are catering to. Also, it depends on the type of analyzers that we are using. Uh, so uh, acceptable rate of 10 to 25%. But if you are still in a smaller lab using a three part analyzer, then almost 100% slides are prepared. If in a standalone lab, a 10 to 15% is a good enough criteria. In a hospital based setting, it would be something more. But as uh, we uh, decide our slide making criteria, the slides are prepared, we view it under the microscope and we report it. This is the standard workflow almost across all the labs. What do I get from the analyzers? The most important information that I get is the hemoglobin, the total counts, the various RBC and platelet indices. Now, we all boast around saying that we are good cytomorphometrists. We feel proud about it. And we look into all the values, all the graphs. There are many research parameters which are provided by various instruments. And we dig deep into these values to look something beneficial coming out of it so that we can report uh, and accordingly uh, aid in the diagnosis. So a simple example, everybody knows about it. And that is a RBC indices, that is size. So a size nowadays also the ICSH also recommends size. We go around by looking into the MCV. So we know the normal values for MCV in different age groups. Anything less than that, we would call it as a microsite. Anything more than that, we call it as a macrosite. So this is one thing that comes from the analyzer and we rarely uh, uh, rely on the uh, slide for that looking, comparing it with a small lymphocyte nucleus size. Most of us are practicing the same way, I guess, and same are the recommendations. Same for the color, looking into the MCH and MCHC and an isocytosis with the, R, the red cell distribution width. The other is whether there are different subsets of population, we uh, label it as the diamorphic cell. Now, this is a simple case of a 36 years old female. Uh, you can see the hemoglobin was 9.3, MCV of 83.7. Now, this case was... Uh, had also peripheral blood smear examination. Obviously, the slide was made. But before I had seen the slide, I knew that the RDW here, as you can see, was on a higher set. What do I do next? I go on to see the histogram. And now I know, yes, there are two different populations of the cell, one being the microsite, other being the normal to macrosite. I call up the clinician, I ask him for any uh, the treatment history in terms of use of hematinics or blood transfusion. Moreover, I have this RBC double population flag. So even before I am seeing the slide, I know that what I am dealing into, my job has become much easier. And 
I report it as a diamorphic blood picture. However, the MCV is normal. So sometimes the MCV can be misleading in terms of not giving me the actual picture, whether it is a microcyte or a macrocyte, and therefore we have to be vigilant enough. So therefore, only not only the values are important, you must go through uh, all the graphs and the flags also. But there has been a debate whether slides are important. Yes, we. I feel slides are really important. Moreover, it is important that we set our slide making criteria such that we don't miss on any crucial information, especially with the various shapes of RBCs, uh, which cannot be given by analyzers. Nowadays, the analyzers have come up with flags, but we need to validate on our uh, machines uh, on our slide, sorry. Then the platelet estimates uh, by looking into the manual uh, estimation of platelet counts. Platelet counts, giant platelets, again, you will get some flags from the analyzer, but what exactly are, are they actually present or not? Are we going to change the platelet counts given by the uh, analyzer? That, has, that all comes from uh, slide examination only. And then there are certain inclusions, which again, you may get a flag from the analyzer, but you always verify it on a slide. So as I have mentioned, in terms of size, we would rely more on the analyzer. Sometimes we'll see it into the slide, but these shapes are something which we need to look into the slide. Now I'll not go into the details of what is the clinical significance of each of these uh, cell type or each of this shape. Uh, but I would like to emphasize on how important it is to grade or quantify these shapes. Now it is uh, what we usually practice is to give out presence or absence of these shapes or we set in grades, but those are arbitrarily set and we also report it on assumptions or arbitrarily, which is quite subjective across various labs. Now, why is this important to quantify in grade that I'll come in my next few slides. I hope I'll justify that. Yes, it is important to quantify and grade it. So for example, this is a grading system in which we have a slide that is one plus moderate that is two plus and mark that is three plus. Now this mark three plus becomes important because that leads to a specific diagnosis for which urgent management might be required. The one plus and two plus have a differential diagnosis which has considerable overlap. So therefore earlier there was a system of one plus two plus and three plus which now the recommendations have come down to only two plus and three plus. I'll again emphasize this with another example of acanthocytes. Now acanthocytes, again, we can see in many severe, uh, many uh, number of cases, different differential diagnosis in slight to moderate amount, but a mark three plus in an infant or a child, if I see mark, acanthocytes present in the peripheral blood smear, I'll ask the clinician to send a stool sample, look into it for the presence of frothy stool or the presence of fat vacuoles under the microscope. I would ask him to do a genetic testing because I want to rule out this condition of A-beta lipoproteinemia, which is the only differential diagnosis coming up if there are marked acanthocytes. Similarly, in an adult, we know that on so many acanthocytes in a peripheral blood smear, it is more likely to be alcoholic liver disease. So we ask the uh, history of the patient. Here I would like to say that it is not only the clinician treating the patient as a hematopathologist. Looking into the slides, we are not only reporting values, we must also aid in the diagnosis of the patient by what our reports say. We must actively participate in discussion with the clinicians so that we get better outcomes for our patients. Now, how do we grade this? So as I said, it is not arbitrary. There are certain recommendations. What I follow in my lab is this ICSS recommendation, which is more of a two-tire system. 
so for example uh, acanthocyte 5 to 20% is 2 plus more than 20% is 3 plus so anything less than 5% is not to be reported as it doesn't add any value to your report now how do i quantify this i count 1000 cells at least and of those 1000 rbcs i will quantify this percentages this may be laborious but this is our job and we do it we have been doing it while grading and maybe we don't uh, emphasize much on the 2 plus or the 1 plus but yes sure a 3 plus or marked uh, and isopoikilocytosis is something which we must put it in our report which would help in the patient diagnosis and further management here uh, although the font size may be a bit low but here Schistocytes are one in which there is still a three tire grading system with less than 1%, 1 percent, 1 to 2 percent, and more than 2 percent. So, here, even a single schistocyte, if seen in context of the clinical history, in context of the other cells in the uh, peripheral blood smear, even a single schistocyte is important and must be informed in the report. Now, I in my lab use this recommendations and these i have put it into cell vision so how i have done it i'll just go through a few slides so i go into the settings tab so technical part has been covered in the past three sessions so i'll run through this we go into the setting tabs we uh, go into the advanced rbc tab and then we go to the rbc limits now, once I click on the RBC limits, I have these various cell types. I can put in the numerical values according to what I want. So, for example, if uh, for a polychromatia, less than 5% is nothing. So, 1 plus, I have nothing. So, I put 5 in 1. A moderate is 5 to 20%. I put 5 in 2 and a uh, marked as more than 20%, I put 20 in 3. So if my cell vision detects uh, less than 5% polychromatic cells, it will give me a zero uh, grading. If it is between 5 to 20%, it gives me a, a 2 plus grading. And if it is more than 20%, it gives me a 3 plus grading. As I had earlier mentioned, for schistocytes, we do have a 1 plus grading. So here I have put 0.1%. So anything between 0.1 to 1% will be graded as 1, 1 to 2% will be graded as 2 and more than 2% will be graded as 3. I can also put in the uh, values for uh, what has to be called as a microsite, what has to be called as a macrocyte, what has to be called as a slight anisocytosis or a moderate anisocytosis, so on and so forth. So these recommendations I have taken up all labs are free to use what they prefer is bet best in their setting and they must put it accordingly into the cell vision with a few cases i'd like to highlight whatever points i have put forward in terms of quantification and grading of rbc so this is the first case uh, this i have uh, borrowed from my alma mater that is tata medical center uh, Kolkata, I would like to thank for this case because this such cases you will find only in a hospital setting. I I you I am sitting in a standalone lab. I might not see bone marrow transplant cases day 22 slides coming to me. So this is a hospital based case where we have a bone marrow transplant unit, a case of classical Hodgkin's lymphoma, a young male child uh, with a refractory disease underwent bone marrow transplant and day plus 22 we got uh, the sample for CBC, a hemoglobin of 5.8 with normal looking RBC indices, a low platelet count and WBC looking normal with normal differential. So I directly go to the RBC tab. Now in cell vision, we have three tabs, WBC, RBC and platelet. We have to go through all of these before we sign out the uh, report. I will uh, emphasize more on RBC and platelets as it is the job that I have to do today. But WBC, looking into all the WBC is equally important. So going on to the RBC, what I see here is 
शिस्टोसाइट्स ऑफ थ्री प्लस विद क्वांटिफिकेशन ऑफ थ्री पॉइंट फाइव परसेंट द टोटल नंबर ऑफ आरबीसी दैट आर काउंटेड इज वन थाउजेंड सिक्स हंड्रेड एंड फोर्टीन एंड दिस इज अव विच आई वुड सी इन माई फोर्टी एक्स मोस्ट लाइकली सो यस आई कैन सी देर आर सर्टन शिस्टोसाइट्स इन दिस पेरिफेरल ब्लड स्मियर the quantification has been done by the cell division i highlight on the cystocytes i see there are cystocytes scattered uh, throughout the uh, peripheral blood and these are the characteristic cystocytes that according to the definition that is with the pointed and smaller than the uh, rbc without any central pallor and to look into a zoom view i look into a zoom view and yes i know this is a cystocyte immediately the uh, doctor would uh, so we would inform the bone marrow transplant unit regarding presence of cystocytes what they did was they sent for a cyclosporin level which came out to be high and accordingly the uh, patient was managed now there are two things which i would like to highlight one is that we gave the grade and the second thing is that we put in the quantification in terms of telling that it was 3.5% so in 1600 rbc around it was 3.5% of cystocytes which amounts to a grade 3 uh, or marked cystocytosis this was communicated and as this bone marrow transplant unit is going to send us samples for follow up to see whether whatever interventions they have done are correct or not it becomes important to quantify this in the follow up samples also and i would be happy or the entire team is happy when this 3.5% comes down to less than 2% and further less than 1% so and if these levels are still not decreasing there needs to be some done something else we know what the prognosis might be then so therefore this quantity is important and this quantity would come from at least 1000 rbcs doing it under a microscope is a laborious process which becomes easier with such a platform a digital platform which gives me quantification uh, very easily and within minutes coming on to the next case a 59 years old gentleman receiving chemotherapy with a past history of cardiac amyloidosis with ccf hypothyroidism and query acute kidney injury presented with pancytopenia i'll directly go to the rbc view over here and i have highlighted the cystocytes now if you could see again this was done in around 2000 rbcs few scattered cystocytes around i zoom to see and yes these are actually cystocytes again smaller than rbc but only 0.5% now i i'm not sure whether i need i must report this or not but as the recommendation goes we need to look into the clinical context of the patient and also look into the other abnormalities as we can see all my poikilocytes are green that is they are um, it's of a zero grade maybe these cystocytes are of importance and if you look into what a slight to moderate grading of cystocyte is in this case i would say maybe it is because of this cancer chemotherapy that he is getting or some prosthetic heart wall which the history has not been provided maybe he has it or a mechanical hemolytic anemia now we are not very sure but one thing is sure this is not still a microangiopathic hemolytic anemia and second is the clinician must follow up this case to look in which direction the patient is going may if if it is because of cancer chemotherapy maybe he would like to change the treatment maybe he would stop up the chemotherapy for some time and accordingly he will intervene in this case but a reporting of even a grade 2 or such rare events is again important now why i say rare is because i knew out of 2000 cell it was only 0.5% so picking such things on a manual microscopy giving relevance to to it might become a bit tough i don't deny it that we were not doing it we were always doing it but i feel that with this digital platform it becomes much easier and you have this uh, things kept as archive for any further reference also i will shift to the next case 
this is a 11 years old girl with a history of fever for two days no other significant complaints all the parameters within normal range almost what i see here is a uh, two plus grade cystocytes around two percent cystocytes 1.9 percent cystocytes so i was worried what was going around i clicked on the cystocytes and then what i found was all the cystocytes were lined either here or here and then looking into the picture i knew that there was a scratch on the slide because of which the cystocytes were cut uh, these uh, red cells were cut or got fragmented so this was not actually the disease process going around this was something which i had put in and that was some garbage that i had put in and what i was getting out was garbage so a not well prepared slide might mislead you so what do i do i go into the individual cell tab i click on the individual cell tab here i can see all the different uh, poikilocytes in this peripheral smear and i know all these poikilocytes are not actually poikilocytes but it it is an artifact so i select all the cystocytes and where do i put it the garbage went in i got garbage and i put this garbage back into the trash bin so this garbage goes into the trash bin i can do it with all the other poikilocytes and then i report this case as a normal because i know that there is nothing significant in this case so with i, I report this normal so with these three cases i try to emphasize on how important it is in a clinical setting to quantify as well as grade uh, the uh, various poikilocytes also it is important that we have we club the analyst analyzer report along with this digital morphology report into hands of a trained skilled hematopathologist you are sure to get best outcomes a next case is uh, a known case of autoimmune hemolytic anemia failed steroid treatment rituximab was started if you see into the values hemoglobin on lower side dct positive ana positive high ldh high bilirubin so all the signs that active hemolysis is going around so with this uh, uh, with this example i will again emphasize on certain points from the horiba analyzer and certain advantages of the selavision and other features which i have used in selavision so here is the nucleated rbc gate of the uh, scattergram in the horiba i know up front that there are nucleated rbcs in this as soon as i saw this graph i knew there were nucleated rbcs in this uh, uh, case and i put this through a selavision now here again you can see scattered uh, nucleated rbcs uh, there is polychromatia almost 7% so grade 2 polychromatia grade 2 spherocytes now here i go into a zoom now this oval blue indicates the grid view that is almost a one high power view so i immediately go to a one high power view i can see nucleated red cells i can see polychromatic cells i can see uh, various spherocytes i can highlight these spherocytes by clicking on the spherocytes tab and yes these are spherocytes so we knew active hemolysis was going around and the patient has nucleated rbcs polychromatic cells and spherocytes so i go into the wbc here i would take the opportunity to venture into this wbc tab which is going to be covered in the next session more elaborately but a part of rbc that is nucleated rbc or the erythroblast are counted in the wbc so we see that around 51 nrbcs were present in 105 wbcs and so quantification has been done i can do a corrected wbc count and i can report it accordingly from here only although here there are two uh, uh, cells which i have marked in oval these are not nucleated red cells which i know so what i do is i reclassify it into whatever it is so it has almost classified all the nucleated rbcs into nucleated rbcs maybe 
uh, one or two cells which are not properly classified and therefore it is important that we do the reclassification in all the cases we did a study on around 30 cases uh, with mr parag i had sent him the data and we found the accuracy of almost 95 to 100 percent in various cell classes for uh, this uh, pre-classification in comparison to the reclassification so almost 95 percent you are sure that the classification given by cell vision if this slide is good uh, Almost 90%, 95% time you are sure that the classification given by Sela Vision is accurate. Yes, there might be chances here and there when the artificial intelligence might classify it into something else. But then they, you have to be there to reclassify it. I have kept this slide specifically to uh, compare two cell types that is nucleated RBC and lymphocytes from the same sample. Now here you can very well see that none of the lymphocytes, uh, none of the nucleated RBC were misclassified as lymphocytes. So all the nucleated RBCs were nucleated RBCs, only those two cells were something else which were uh, classified. So for lymphocyte it was almost 100%. For this case, we reported all the findings along with the grades. Now, why again in this case, the grades are important. We know that the patient has already failed two treatments. Now he is on to rituximab. If my quantification of various ferrocytes or NRBCs is coming down in the follow-up, I know the treatment is working. It is not coming. Uh, we know that we need to find something else. So this way we help clinicians a lot. Coming on to my next case. Now, this is something interesting. I have on purpose put the date that is 7th March 2021. A 72 years elderly female presented, uh, sent the sample and uh, there was pancytopenia. I was just going through this cell vision picture. It was around 6.30 or 7 o'clock in the evening. And when I saw here was something 0.3% parasite. I just clicked on it. I usually tend to click on all the cell types to verify whether the flagging is proper or not. Now, as I did this, what I found was, yes, there were rings. I immediately put a antigen card and to be very frank, I looked it under the microscope and uh, I was then assured to see Although these were so scarce that it took me a lot of time to find these rings. But then, you know, it, it is for me, this is still a changing process from microscope to cell vision. Although I am getting into grip of cell vision, I have been doing lots of things with cell vision, but still I am in this uh, process of change. So I looked under the microscope and uh, it was very tough to find these rings under the microscope. But yes, I could find a locate one. And we reported that as uh, Plasmodium falciparum, the parasitic index of less than 1%. And as you can see, this was pancytopenia, an elderly female, falciparum. It was important for me to immediately contact the doctor, let him know that there is malaria. Now, this date I have put on a purpose. It was 7th of March evening time, anything. Uh, so it was just starting of this COVID second wave in our part. So uh anything with fever or anything we would have been suspecting corona around and second in india usually we have malaria um in the seasons from july to september and very rarely we will find any uh, malaria cases in march but this rare finding which i picked up on cell vision helped me in proper diagnosis and early diagnosis of this case and maybe the patient must have got some proper treatment just because I had this uh, advantage of television which uh, gave me a flag for malaria parasite. Now this is a case of cold agglutinin disease. What we see here is lots of RBC agglutination. This is not a badly prepared slide. This is a RBC agglutination. What we do is we put the sample into incubator at 37 degrees centigrade. <coughs> Sorry. And we get this picture afterwards, still some agglutination remains. 
why i have put this example is to emphasize one of the features of cella vision and that is putting into comment now at my center we are in almost completed the process of incorporating the reports from cella vision into p8000 and from there to my lis so whatever i am doing the cella vision i can see on my uh, uh, pc or my laptop i will put in comments it will directly go to the lis into the patient report so here i can put some standard comments uh, as uh, as templates or i can just put rbc agglutination is observed and this goes directly into the patient report so uh, the this was all about the rbc morphology i hope i uh, did justice in um, putting in advantages of cella vision and also um uh, showing you some of the features which i have been using in the past one year next i will quickly go through the platelet estimate and platelet morphology which because in the second session there were many doubts regarding this platelet i came up with this idea that i'll put in few slides on this platelet estimate because uh, i am sitting in a area where we have this harris syndrome or the giant platelet syndrome my slide criteria would have been much less if ha had it not been for this giant platelet syndrome i see almost 100 slides of only platelet abnormality and the platelet abnormality is a platelet count in between 50000 to 110000 and eventually i report it out in somewhere between 1 lakh to 1 lakh 60000 so not only that when a analyzer gives you a Uh, count of less than one lakh, you always tend to search for hemoparasites. You always tend to search for any atypical leukocytes. Uh, you tend to go through the flags or the uh, scatter grams. So a uh, low platelet count less than one lakh, the slide consumes more time because you know there are no flags. It was just a giant platelet flag, but still because the counts were low, you go into the slide, you check for the WBC abnormalities. you check for any hemoparasites <clears throat> you do a manual platelet estimate ideally 20 fields in a oil immersion doing a average multiplying it by 15000 or 20000 as uh, as the uh, sop of your lab and then you report out this so it takes time so what we did uh, we are trying to come up use this hello solution to make our task easier so what we did was we did a short study in our uh, lab we took around 30 samples with a platelet count of more than 150000 mpv around 9 10 so that we knew there were no giant platelet infer interference with a normal platelet distribution weight we put this uh, through the uh, horiba analyzer got a impedance count then we put the slide into a cella vision we got the platelet estimates uh, for these we calculated the conversion factor divided it by the 30 samples that we had and we got a conversion factor of 15.3 rounding it off i have put it as 15 in my uh, cella vision so you can see uh, you can do a platelet count on four fields in this two high power field per square or in a 16 fields 4 into 4 that is in a 0.5 high power field per square or you can do it on 3 into 3 which is my preferred uh, view so i count nine uh, uh, fields which is equal to almost one high power field and then i use one more feature which i feel is very useful and that is putting on this grid so once i put this grid i am sure i am not uh, recounting a cell um, this has been uh, to a trained eye in newbar chamber looking during our empty days going through all those grids so this made my uh, task easier because i was habitual to that and uh, then i count these number or these platelets in this uh, field i put this number as 6 as i see 6 platelets i go to the next field i count the platelets put 9 as the number so on and so forth so once i have completed all the nine fields i get a platelet average 
I mul the the machine automatically multiplies it by whatever platelet estimate factor I have put in. We after doing all the calculations put it as fifteen point zero. I get a platelet count of one lakh twenty thousand. In comparison to manual microscopy, this is faster. and we are truly counting nine fields and putting just not putting an estimate on yeah we can see almost 8 to 10 platelets per field and then we put out it as an average we actually count nine fields doesn't take much time and we are sure that we are giving correct platelet count here again the same case the analyzer was 78000 we reported it as 120000 with giant platelet this screen compares the giant platelets with uh, the lymphocytes again we know there is no overlap in these two the machine has correctly identified these two not only giant platelets the machine also identifies thrombocyte aggregates so uh, platelet count on analyzer was 1 lakh 3000 we saw these aggregates giant platelet with reported normal count with giant platelet and platelet comes we could have as the count for more than 1 lakh i didn't intervene much if it would it would have been less definitely we would ask for a sample in citrate tube and we would then uh, done uh, counted it through an analyzer to give a more accurate most likely this is a edt induced uh, thrombocyte aggregation so not only giant platelets we can also see thrombocyte aggregates now 26 years old female came to a routine anc checkup now this is a feature of horiba that i have just started using it is into a study or validation phase and it is the optical platelet count so this again i feel that it will be of some utility to me let the study uh, results come into but the um, uh, the published articles are in favor of these alternative methods of platelet counting because we know the uh, drawbacks of platelet in, uh, impedance count in terms of overlap between the microcytes or the giant platelets uh, giving a falsely low platelet count especially as i have mentioned i am sitting in a area where we have giant platelets very huge platelets almost the size of rbcs more than the rbc size and these are all counted as rbc in a impedance uh, counter so this is something which is under study i won't go into much but yes i know uh, for a platelet count of 1 lakh 15000 with a mp of 14.3 my optical platelet count came out to be 1 lakh 55000 and which was verified on manual examination as i told we are under study or validation of this process and i am finding the result satisfactory in almost 90 to 95% cases the optical platelet count is matching more to uh, my manual count and this specifically is to those uh, uh, cases in which i have a low platelet count with high um, mpv otherwise uh, platelet impedance count is absolutely uh, correct when it comes to a normal platelet count so we uh, in the study we have taken up only those samples which have a platelet count of less than 1 lakh 20000 and a high mpv so this this is something which the cbc analyzer gives me in terms of uh, platelet count this is an interesting case which i just came across a 63 years old male on chemotherapy for colon cancer was continuously giving been given a report of thrombocytopenia of less than 1 lakh for the last 10 days uh, i don't know why uh, uh, the either the slides were not seen or maybe it was not picked up luckily i picked it up or i would say the cellavision picked it up when i went into the uh, wbc screen what i found was two interesting phenomena one was this platelet satellitism that is the platelet sticking around the neutrophils or the granulocytes and the interesting thing was this monocyte didn't like this platelet sticking to neutrophils and it started eating it up so uh, we had two phenomena together which is rarely reported so we are putting this up for publication or at least images so it was platelet satellitism with platelet phagocytosis by monocytes and this was 
not a thrombocytopenia rather a pseudo thrombocytopenia i immediately asked for a citrate sample the platelet counts came out to be more than 1 lakh and it was reported so well that would be uh, something with all my cases uh, moving forward definitely uh, i feel that i am changing from my microscope to cell vision artificial intelligence is everywhere nowadays from your internet banking to the google maps to everywhere you we tend to uh, rely on artificial intelligence more than the uh, man and uh, so here also there are pros yes i have emphasized a lot on how quantification is easier in this how i can pick up rare events not only that i can archive this i can use it for training purposes i can use uh this platform uh, to compare two cells to compare slides so so i have many uh, advantages with this although uh, the slide rate here is 20 slides per hour so one might feel it is a uh, time taking but i would surely say that it is important and it is very useful if at all you have time on hands and you can put in all the slides into cell vision if that can be the workflow nothing like it coupled with the uh, cbc analyzer report that is the histogram the uh, flags the values the research parameters look into it couple it up with your digital morphology results and i am sure you will pick up many rare things you will pick up many insights into the the diagnosis of the patient what is going on with the patient pathogenesis uh, disease pathogenesis and you will come up with brilliant reports so uh, there my so this time factor is there but yes i i would put uh, more weightage on accuracy than the time going into uh, here i would like to confess that i have not entirely shifted to cell vision as yet but almost 80% of my slides are going into cell vision some few i see still see under the microscope sometimes because accepting change might be difficult a cell vision i still doubt it i go and look into the microscope however i have never found any change but still i tend to do that so accepting this change might be difficult but once you go through it it is user friendly you will easily accommodate with it and you will find the advantages so what i feel is the workflow of my lab which i would like to see in coming days all this i have emphasized upon i have replaced here my microscope with a cell vision everything goes into p8000 that is the middleware of horiba it decides what slides are to be made that is by the criteria that i have fed in everything comes to my personal computer to my ls all the values from the analyzer all the flags all the graphs and the entire report from the digital morphology platform that is cell vision comes through p8000 to my ls i sit on my desk i review everything and then i release a report which i am confident enough that i am not making any mistake well this is my lab the hellos platform with two cbc analyzers one for reticulocyte count and other cbc parameters other giving me only cbc so with a workload of more than 500 samples per day both of these continuously run for 8 hours or so then we have this automated track system with uh, this uh, uh, the slide preparing and staining system we get good quality slides with good stain all this is put in into the cell vision and i get the report at my desk which i can uh, look into everything and verify with this i like to thank everyone from the team horiba especially dr ankur for giving me this opportunity i would like to thank mr parag from cell vision for his inputs uh, the hematology department especially mr sir and dr rakesh from tata medical center for helping me out with one or two cases and my entire team of suraksha diagnostic who are still working in my lab when i am presenting over here and they made they helped me out in making this presentation thank you very much
thank you dr bhagwat for such a fantastic and edifying session i must really compliment you on thought provoking cases especially that uh, platelet satellitism and platelet phagocytosis which showed the required necessity and utility of digital morphology uh it was interesting to know how mcv can be misleading how important it is to grade and quantify various rbc shapes which can ultimately lead to diagnosis how even a small number of cells are picked on the digital morphology and in some cases it was really interesting to know like clinician also didn't suspect malaria but somehow you were able to pick because of the advanced technology and all obviously this uh, platelet and all other big boon for thrombocytosis and thrombocytopenia and as dr bhagwat said here we also learned how it is imperative to have a good hematology analyzer like he is using umizen uh, 20 h2500 which comes with many new features like mic and mac optical platelets and all so so definitely these will complement each other and pathologist will keep on giving proper diagnosis and the most important manual microscopy will be there it won't go out of a, out of the flavor uh so uh, so begin the, to begin with the question and answer session we also have mr parag taukar he has more than 25 years of experience in ivd industry at various levels parag is currently working with cella vision since 2018 and he is based in mumbai india handling south asian countries so all right let's start with question and answer session which i am sure it will be the most interesting part hi good evening everyone thank you dr bhagwat for this excellent session it was really nice and you've uh, kind of illustrated great cases on this system using the cellavision and the halo system so thanks for that and thanks uh, horiba for allowing us to use this platform to present uh, the new age digital cellavision systems so we are open to any questions from anyone i uh, guess uh, one question is from dr sozu so we have uh, came across several reports like there are some reports of mushroom shaped rbc in covid positive patients so did you come across any such cells or anything so uh, actually i would say not because uh, we as a stand alone lab usually don't get histories so i will have to specifically look into uh, this i'll maybe set up a study for that because it it becomes very tough uh, we are not very sure of what cases are we getting and it is rather after we see something unusual we uh, go to and this is a drawback of a uh, stand alone lab that without histories we are looking into the cases and we are reporting it but uh, i have not come across yes there have been many wbc uh, uh, abnormalities in terms of counts which uh, has also been uh, uh, properly published but uh mushroom shaped cells i have not come across no okay okay yeah fine so uh so is there any way to calculate the platelet factor yes as i showed we did the study on this 30 samples so maybe i went quickly through that slide so so this platelet factor what we did actually was we uh, took 30 samples with a uh, normal mpv because i didn't want giant platelets into it so a normal mpv and a count of more than 150000 now i put one sample say the count in the uh, uh cella vision uh, in the uh, horiba analyzer in one, is 180000 like i counted on my uh, uh cella vision if the counts matches to 180000 like i know the conversion factor is 15 and that way if for every case we did that we did an average for the 30 cases and we came up with this conversion factor of 15.3 now i have purposely not put 15.3 as platelet estimate factor because it doesn't make a much difference when i am counting 6 uh, or 7 or 8 uh, cells per high power field hardly one or two platelet count would be here or there and anyways i am not going to use this uh, platelet counting for thrombocytosis cases i would do only for cases with thrombocytopenia and then a 0.3 won't make much of a difference and 
therefore a 15 was comfortable to me and i put 15 we could have easily put 15.3 got this platelet counts in fraction that was that could have been done but just to make things easier i put it as 15 okay okay got it yes yeah uh, there is one more question can you reclassify uh, the rbc and like if you are not completely satisfied yeah sure um as i showed in one of the cases those schistocytes were not schistocytes and those were because of um uh, the uh, artifact of plate uh, the scratch along the slide i put all those into the trash similarly if i feel that some acanthocytes are not acanthocytes but those are echinocytes i can put them into echinocytes if i feel that there are uh, certain cells uh, for example, which are normal cells, I can put all those into normal cells. Yes, the same way as we can reclassify WBCs, we can similarly classify our uh, uh, RBCs also. Reclassify so that. Can, so it can be easily done. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, very easily. It is just drag and drop. Okay, and Dr. Bhagavad, you are getting many compliments from the audience regarding Thank your you. case presentation, especially that Thank I, I said already. Satellite satellism with monocytic phagocytes. Yeah, that was really interesting. That was really we, we I had seen this platelet satellism I think three years ago, and I was seeing it after three years. I have seen hardly five or six cases of platelet satellism, and for me this was the first case in which there was an overlap of platelet satellitism with phagocytosis. So I went through literature. I have seen uh, in literature there are reported cases of platelet satellitism with neutrophil phagocytosis. But I have I did not come across of any in which there was uh, monocyte phagocytosis. Frankly speaking, till now I haven't seen a single case. Okay, so these are rare cases. Yeah, and you have to be lucky to see. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> One uh, question from Mr. Jaldi. Yeah, uh, yeah. What are your experience about patients with Harris syndrome, which is relatively often seen in people of uh, West Bengal. This is something which we, uh, I, as I told, we see almost 100 slides for this Harris syndrome patients. And it is important for these also, especially when there is a dengue season going around, when you have this COVID. Again, I have seen many cases of COVID uh, showing thrombocytopenia. So it is important for these cases that we at least give a near about estimate of platelets. So uh, Cella vision with this platelet estimate that I have put in with those three into three cell, uh, I feel confident enough to report it out as given by cell vision. I, I really feel confident in it. I know I can preserve it for later. If any questions arises, if some patient asks me the platelet count analyzer has given such and such platelet count, still you are reporting it like this. I feel confident I have those digital images kept with me to tell no, actually this was the case scenario in which the analyzer gave low because of the impedance counting and actually on a slide we saw more number of platelets. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, one question is from Dr. Prakash. What is the criteria or threshold to identify a giant platelet from an RBC? Should I repeat? So criteria, yeah. Yeah, so Mr. Parag, would you like to come on this? Yeah. Yeah. So, so basically, what you need to realize is, uh, like uh, the WBCs, I mean, television is basically using an artificial intelligence and a neural network to classify the cells. So it does not see it based on just size, just nucleus. Uh, you know, a, a lot of like in we said in the initial. Uh, cases it's um, based on multiple parameters uh, for uh, getting <clears throat> or reclassifying or classifying the cell but in general uh, what we say is uh, anything more than seven microns is uh, what we would say is a large platelet or a giant and like i said uh, again it is classifying or we would like to call it as pre-classification not classification and it is for the user to define whether they would think these are uh, giant platelets or macro platelets, as you would say that. So, for from uh, cell vision perspective, it is seven microns. 
so can it help to redefine normal platelet count in east indian population yeah why not we uh, will uh, we will definitely uh, take this point and i'll i'll definitely go through if we can really redefine it in but then the problem is that not everybody in eastern india has this giant platelet syndrome so i am not sure how we will uh, but yes we can yes look into it if we can do it yeah yes yes i hope dr prakash this answers your question and now one question is from dr gorav have you seen cases with high mcv post covid lot of pathologists are seeing increased mcv in covid patients have you come across any such finding yes we have seen certain cases uh, with macrocytes but what exactly is the pathogenesis i am not very sure more so uh, in terms of hemoglobin or the rbc counts there has not been much of uh, changes in covid patient it is more into uh, wbc counts the neutrophil to lymphocyte ratio and seeing young young adults being uh, affected in this covid uh, second wave i have i see lots of cases with neutropenia surprisingly with uh, counts of less than 4000 and neutrophil counts of um, 80 90 something yeah no no the neutrophil counts are rather lower that is 25 to 30% neutrophils and uh, around 60% lymphocytes typically as we see in any viral infection with the lymphocyte counts more than the neutrophil count so earlier the nlr is a well established feature but nowadays i am seeing in especially in young adults the age group of 20 to 40 affected with covid with uh, low wbc count and uh, low neutrophil percentage So earlier in the first wave we were uh, more into low lymphocyte and more neutrophil, but this is something which I have seen. But surprisingly, Doctor Bhagwat, in some cases, typical bacterial infection features are also there, like high TLC. Yeah, exactly. So there is varied, varied, varied presentation of this COVID, and you cannot just put uh, some. criteria to say that this this is severe covid but it would require intensive study to see what the patient outcome is in terms of when they have a low neutrophil or a thrombocytopenia one of my friends has actually done a study on thrombocytopenic purpura in covid patients and he has found bad outcomes in these patients who present with low counts and low thrombocyte counts so that is something which uh, is there in studies but extensive studies will have to be done and in the way all the labs are doing we really have time for any study set <laughs> so we are just going on and on with cases and reporting cvcs and yes. other parameters <laughs> yeah. every day new features new parameters <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. and now dr prakash again again comes with another question Did Salavision have any experience to understand morphological differences between reactive and hereditary thrombocytosis? Thrombocytopenia, that is. Yes, thrombocytopenia. Sorry, yeah. So, uh, yes, definitely the uh, the parameters which we almost always con uh, look upon are the MPVs and others. So, definitely, giant platelets is something which would come more. Uh, in say uh, some hereditary things rather than in reactive things so th these are the parameters which are the age old parameters which would pick, pick up now cell vision i would personally say is not something which is going to give me any added information in terms of what an analyzer gives me it is going to give me an information what i would have otherwise seen into a microscope the advantage that i have is that it picks up rare things it picks up it classifies it for me and moreover the best thing that i find about it is i see all the neutrophils together i see all the uh, giant thrombocyte together i see all the lymphocytes together which does not happen when i go through scanning a slide so i for example if i have to locate a hypolobed neutrophil in cases of uh, dysplasia or so so when i have 30 or 40 neutrophils coming together it becomes easier to pick up So again, for example, this platelet satellitism had it been on. So it was not around all the neutrophils that I had this platelet satellitism. It was very few neutrophils which showed this platelet satellitism. So had I seen only uh, say 25 or 30 uh, uh, cells, 
and then a short differential on 25 to 30 cells. I might have missed it on a manual microscopy. But when I see all the neutrophils together, out of those 50 neutrophils, I could pick up this in two or three neutrophils that uh, the platelet satellitism was there. It was not uh, across all the neutrophils. It was only on two to three. So this is something which I feel more uh, advantageous in terms of using cell vision, where I can see all the cells together. Otherwise, it is same as uh, manual microscopy and it entirely depends on the user skill level on how we are using it. And clubbing it with uh, uh, analyzers would give you the best results. Very true, Dr. Mahmoud. I completely yeah, agree. Mr. Karang, if you want to just comment on this. No, I think you summed it up very well. I think what we're trying to say here is that television is not something that is, you know, out of the world, uh, you know, replacing a microscope in that sense that it gives you a a better picture it is it is showing you exactly what you are seeing under the microscope helping you uh, you know streamline your workflow process ensuring that you do not miss abnormalities and uh, like i've been saying in the previous sessions these are analyzers which, which pre classify not classify so like you said sir in the beginning is the man behind the machine which is always important like it is for cell vision, like it is for cell counters, like it is for any any uh, system in your laboratory. I think obviously the pathologist is important. These are all systems that basically help you in your workflow process and extension of your uh, arm, so to say, uh, to in ensure that you know things are sped up in you know, current scenarios. We have such high volume, so things are. Uh, much faster without compromising quality. I think that's that's right, 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 right. Oh, Mr. Jaldeep is saying, ki, Dr. Bhagwat, with the cell vision at your disposal, you really must study this reported phenomenon of mushroom yeah, I, I am really thankful to all those who are putting in comments, giving me lots of ideas for coming up with various studies on uh, Hello Solutions and cell vision. I'm really thankful to all of you. I will take a point of it. I'll come up with some study plan and I'll definitely uh, do it. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Dr. Bhagwat, really a contained session and very interesting one. I hope ki all audience are mesmerized by the case presentation. So thank you. Now we are running out of time. So we should be like ending this session. Uh, so thank you, dear audience, for attending this webinar and exploring these delightful cases. We'll be sending a participation certificate too. And once again, thank you, Dr. Bhagwat, for this brilliant conference on digital morphology. I would like to thank Parag and my dear audience for such an interesting and exciting session. Uh, so, but we are coming back again on 14th, uh, 14th May, same time, 5 to 6 p.m., to take you to the world of WBC and digital morphology. So, stay tuned for the next session. Thank you once again. Namaste, stay home, and most important, stay safe. Thank you and bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you very much.